Hello everyone, I'm happy to be back. Right now we have with us Anmol Prabhu. He is doing something that I found very interesting and encouraging, trying to develop energy efficiency kitchens. It's an intriguing topic, but I think very important. So let's listen to him. Over to you, Anmol. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, my, I would say my following of uh, Subhatsa started in way back in, I think, 2016-17 when he was writing on Quora a lot about uh, economics in India. And uh, it was very uh, fascinating to read his answers in Quora. And uh, since then, I it was the last art of writing on Quora. And I'm glad I found him on the LinkedIn because it's a really uh, something new which is tried, which is with Witpets, where uh, interesting individuals come on board and share their ideas and their uh, journeys. So uh, I'd just like to brief uh, the people about what I am. Uh, so basically, I am a mechanical engineer. Uh, I've done my diploma in HVAC. Uh, I have also taken up as a chartered engineer uh, to speak about my journey as uh, how I came to here. Uh, basically, I am from a Konkani family. Uh, we I was born in Bangalore. And a lot of us were uh, based in Bangalore, like my family was based in Bangalore. Uh, we are about hardly, I would say, 2 million in population in India. We are very, very few people. And uh, generally, the family uh, background of our culture is we are mostly into banking sector. Uh, the Mangalore sector, the Mangalore district is usually known for a lot of uh, investors and banking uh, people. Uh, but uh, I always been have been a Hathoda guy from my childhood where I used to break apart things and you know check them out and then try to reassemble again. So my interest in mechanical has been uh, since a child. And uh, as I grew and I finished my uh, college, I uh, worked in Delhi for a brief while where I learned about air flow simulations. And then uh, we have a family business where we focus on uh, manufacturing chimneys. So we originally started with a small end where we started with restaurants in Hyderabad. And then uh, we moved little by little, step by step into the bigger market. So we moved to hotels and then IT parks. So that is what we're currently doing right now. Uh, the reason we go into this is because one of the uh, primarily factor in uh, any building, it may be a IT building, it may be a hotel, it can be any kind of commercial complex. Generally, if you look at the numbers, 60% of the energy consumed is from the HVAC industry. And in the 60%, again, that 40 to 50% comes purely from the kitchen area. Now, kitchen as a whole has a huge energy, I would say, deficit creating because uh, potential because of the uh, type of environment it creates. Uh, generally, in, if you look at any building, the primary factor of uh, comfort in any other area would be always temperature and humidity. But in kitchen, the air quality is very important. So that is where we, uh, you know, we try to work to understand where and how we can address the situation. So we started out with manufacturing chimneys. And as we moved, uh, we understood that there is it's a very uh, difficult science to understand because it entails a lot of uh, different materials, different particulates, different uh, you know kind of uh, gases, and trying to isolate them and trying to work with them is a big headache. So as we moved on uh, from the restaurant business to the IT buildings and hotels, we understood there's a dearth of actual people working in this industry, and that was where it helped us really follow up and understand. What can we do to address this issue? Because the originally the company which uh, the family business was, we were originally into uh, service of air conditioning equipment. But we always had a tussle with the kitchen equipment uh, people because uh, generally they would either oversize it or undersize it. And when they would oversize it, if they would really suck away the air conditioner into the kitchen, which would uh, really shoot up the tonnage. And uh, if they would undersize it, the, a lot of smoke would uh, spill into the working area and everyone would know what cooking is going on today in the you know the live section so we tried to address it one uh, step at a time and we found that there is a lot of types of cooking which happens in india which is not really understood because cooking is something very personal it is something very i would say uh, close to heart of every person who tries and every chef comes with his own skill set and his own I would say, style of working. And uh, trying to tame the dragon there becomes very difficult. So that is where we tried, let's make it a little bit more broader. And as we moved on there, we found that 
uh, there are few standards in uh, the world which use these kind of uh, you know calculations to understand the ventilation part. But again, the issue what happened was they the uh, standards were mostly planned on the international market that is American and the European standards. And there are very few people who actually understand the Indian uh, context of cooking. Uh, briefly, I always talk about, uh, when I talk about Indian cooking, uh, whenever I meet my uh, international counterparts in this industry on the committee, the kitchen ventilation committee, I give them a, a life lesson where where they know only, the only thing what they understand is something called naan bread. Yeah. And I tell them, in uh, India, there are a lot of times of... Uh, I would say procedures of making bread or naan, you can say, you have a tandoori roti, you have a rumali roti, you have a pulka, you have a chapati, you have parathas. Mm. All of them encounter with a different style of operation and different type of equipment addressing it. Yes. So uh, understanding this is very, very important because unless you understand what generates the issue, you cannot solve the problem. And that is where we have been slowly moving to that. Uh, we started out with manufacturing chimneys and now slowly I have taken a deviation from the family business to try to establish a sort of energy efficiency in kitchen because uh, right now a lot of people have been taking the power for granted. They have become so, uh, I would say, uh, okay with just throwing money at gas or power bills because they can make profit out of the customer who is buying the food. That is where I said, if we are able to address even 1% or at least 5% of the energy in the kitchen, we will be able to really change the dynamics of the you know cost parameter there. Moving on there, we found that there are a lot of ways where you can save. Uh, currently, looking at IT as a whole, which is the biggest sector which produces a lot of food right now, yeah. at least in the uh, tier 1 and tier 2 cities, they have been moving to electrical uh, appliances. That is where you get a lot of efficiency in terms of cooking. But again, the the I would say the personal touch of a chef comes into play because one of the things which I will always give an example to a people about what how do you differentiate uh, how does a how does a chef feel when you ask him suddenly to stop using uh, Chinese wok and start using electrical wok. So if you ever use the uh, EV, the first thing you notice is there's no humming of the uh, engine. And it is very, very difficult to figure out whether the, whether the uh, car or bike is actually on or not because they're not used to it. Yes. So that is the same thing what happens in kitchens where a lot of chefs have been, you know, uh, they've been listening to the uh, guzzling sound of the uh, gas so long out of the life. When you give them an electric station, they get, become really, really... Uh, different and a unique thing to like uh, get catered to because they are trying to you know rewire their brain to sort of understand the cooking is based on the not on the sound of the uh, yeah. vessel but rather the actual flavor yeah uh, I, i've also been focusing on the iq in the kitchen because about uh, every i think about top five thing people right now in the world who struggle from a lot of heart diseases and stress related are actually the chefs and a lot of chefs do work in strenuous conditions where you have 45 degrees of sometimes even 50 degrees of heat in the kitchen and they are asked to work close to 12 hours. Yeah. And that is very, very painful for them. And yeah. that is where if we say that even if you're able to address a 5 degree change in the temperature in some form and able to get relief to them in some form, they will be very, very happy to work and they will not be attrition in this sector anymore. Yeah. The sad reality of our hospitality sector right now is that there's a huge attrition because uh, mainly that is a service-based industry and a lot of people have been wanting to move away from service because, again, it is a non-thanking job and uh, people want to have the comfort of either working from home or working in an air-conditioned atmosphere. But yeah. again, uh, we have not come to the stage where we have robotics, which is we do all the cooking and uh, work so that you can sit at your place and you know execute whatever you feel like. So right now, uh, there are two areas where I'm working is. One is something called demand control kitchen ventilation, where we are focusing on reducing the uh, consumption of kitchen, uh, I would say the chimney, because in if you look at any hotel or any kind of IT park, you have different batteries of cooking happening. So you have a North Indian, you have a South Indian, you have a Chinese, you have a Continental, etc. But the thing is, 
all of them are not working at the same time. You do not have a person coming in the morning at say, 10 a.m. and saying, I want to eat noodles in the morning. Yeah. They start out with a simple breakfast. It may be dosa, idli, paratha, puri, yeah. whatever. Yeah. So the problem is, even though we have the all the skill to build these kind of systems, but there's actually very, very few people who understand the nitty gritties of tuning it to the right energy requirement. So that is what we have been doing right now. We have been focusing on trying to reduce the power in consumption, at least in one area, one sector at a time. That is the first parameters. Second is we have been slowly uh, nudging industries, uh, you know, industry diets, so that they move to a electric kitchen for the beginning, and then slowly, slowly move to a reduced amount of consumption. So that uh, generally, what happens is if you're able to, I would say, incentivize. Uh, uh, any kind of employee, any kind of person saying that if you can bring your own food in an IT building, or you can say you give a uh, so reduced portion in terms of consumption for a guest in the hotel, you're able to have some kind of, uh, I would say, reduction in your power itself. That is what we have been slowly nudging towards. In India as a whole, I would say we have been slowly very, very, I would say, crawling towards uh, energy dependency. Uh, and uh, again, we, are, we have not moved towards independence, in my opinion, because we still uh, cater to a lot of, uh, I would say, wants of the industry by just uh, working with LBG and PNG right now. I would say we are still far away from that. But yes, it will take time. Uh, one step at a time is what I always say. If you cannot, uh, you, should, you should really take it slow because the idea here is uh, any change which is sudden tends to be drastic and may uh, you know fail. So I tend to slowly nudge all kind of uh, chief engineers or facility managers to change one segment or one sector of their kitchen to electrical and then reduce their power one at a time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So is this induction cooking that you are talking about or is the heat? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Mostly, it is the electrical and induction board. Yeah. Uh, we, there is also the new technology, which is something called uh, flameless kitchen, or yeah. it's called something called infrared IR uh, burners. Yeah. Yeah. So the beauty of this is right now that they use uh, less energy compared to a normal uh, chula or a bulk burner. Yeah. And uh, that helps in reducing your PNG or LPG requirement as a whole. Hmm. Uh, again, sometimes... Uh, we as Indians are very used to eat the specific flavors of food. Like you, you need that oiliness in a Chinese noodles. You need the burnt crisp uh, flavor of a tandoori roti. Yeah. You need the uh, you know the buttered version of a bene dosa. So that is what sometimes uh, catering to needs of uh, people becomes very difficult. But yeah. we, if you're able to move at least a portion of it one step at a time, you're able to address a good amount of energy requirement there. Yeah, okay. And is this uh, reasonably revenue generating or how is it going for you in terms of money? Yes. Sir. So uh, right now, uh, if you're looking at the current uh, market, a lot of people have been slowly moving to the energy efficiency requirement because uh, I would say IT buildings have their own ESG goals which require them to have okay. the, uh, reduce their power in some form. So yes. that is where we have been helping them. Yeah. Same thing in a hotel. I would say hotels have been moving to a sustainable uh, front where they have been asking a way and a form to reduce their energy so that yeah. they're able to rely less on the, I would say, public grid or their own, yes. you know, any kind of energy from outside. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So there is a, a large scale, among the large scale users, there is awareness, right? And more than awareness, there's a money issue right there. And public uh, where public face also because IT business yeah. uh, they really can't afford to be inefficient in energy money wise and also they don't want to be resp held responsible for climate change uh, because of the people yeah. who are there so they are very much into it you know okay uh, but uh, your expertise is only in the cooking part not in the overall part right so uh, one of the things which I also do in the entire uh, segment as an energy efficiency as a whole is we start with the, uh, I would say the bottom most, which is the kitchen equipment. We try to change one step at a time. And then we move top, that is we move 
uh, we try to build something more energy efficient chimneys and then we go to the blowers or the exhaust blower as we call because if you're able to change uh, the blowers and reduce the um, requirement of the suction capacity of a blower by some form you're able to save energy there itself again again it is a very difficult thing to change the segment it is basically asking to dismantle an entire car and you know assemble new components which is very difficult and very cost costly so that is where uh, the only way to, uh, to address with chief engineers of hotels is to start with one segment that is you start with the kitchen equipment first and then uh, after you get a roi then you move to the chimney and then you move to the blows one step at a time that way okay retrofit is difficult everybody in this business knows it we are talking retrofit yes. retrofit is tough but in india so many new things are coming up what is the mentality there so uh, right now i would say uh, there have been i, I can quote a few numbers that a lot of people i would say about 30 to 40% of uh, industry people uh, professional and others who have been uh, moving uh, like buying their own houses have started opting for induction equipment instead of gas over their you know cooking requirement because mm -hmm. one of the things is that uh, as uh, as our generation uh, proceeds and succeeds we have been finding that our older generation were used to working with only one or two stoves. Now, even though we have four stoves, it is actually not requirement. So the people, what they've been doing is, they said, let's have two stoves and one in induction equipment so that we're able to do three, uh, you know, cooking it simultaneously. Yeah. That is one part of the segment. Yeah. Uh, number two is where, you know, a lot of people have been catering to their uh, uh, tastes, but by ordering from Zomata and Swiggy. Yeah. So we have been slowly nudging uh, local cloud kitchens where wherever they are available by helping them uh, and again switch equipment so that they can be more efficient in some form. Okay, wonderful. You know, in the US now, many, you know, here nothing happens nationally. Okay, Everything is done by states. Okay, it's really, when they say United States of America, it's really divided <laughs> states of America. So there are many states that are actually prohibiting new homes to have gas cooking. Yes, I right. think New York is one of them. Yeah, New York, Vermont, many are saying, California, that after X years, you cannot build any new home or even retro, you know, if you are doing a retrofit, like major repair, as they call it, you know, if you're just doing small thing, it's okay. If you are doing a major renovation of your home or your kitchen and so on, then you cannot put in natural gas anymore. I think it's an overreaction, but that's just my opinion. That's what I see that the trend is moving in that direction. Now, you know, nothing happens in every state here. It happens in a few states, but that is sort of the beginning uh, of the change in practical terms that cooking is going to be electric. Now, how the hell they will meet the demand of uh, the cloud servers, the electric cars, and the electric cooking remains to yes. be seen. <laughs> yes. that is, you know, you don't get electricity. You can't just get it. <laughs> anyway, let's leave that. Uh, tell us something more about what you are doing, where your clients are, and so on. So uh, I'd just like to add one more point here. Uh, there have been a, also a new trend where you have robotic kitch, uh, cooking happening in the uh, cloud kitchens as a whole. Uh, it is not very drastic, but it's it's a very, uh, it's slowly permeated into the, I would say, small time uh, cloud kitchens where they are trying a sort of uh, experiment to see whether they are able to get the same flavor, same efficiency and a uh, few uh, red, uh, more productive time in terms of cooking uh, because again uh, India has a skill labor issue right now and we are not able to get the right amount of people to you know work the kitchens in that kind of strenuous uh, in the, you know environment and to address this it is very difficult because again the equipment uh, required to cater to these kind of robotics is very very uh, niche and very very uh, difficult to you know uh, get from uh, India uh, again, our airlines comes on uh, China as a whole uh, because they are the one who supplies all electronic goods. But I think slowly that industry will move to a sort of uh, robotic cooking uh, process where you have a, a station of, say, 10 stations, each of them is making a specific uh, food item and it is served with, you know, in about five minutes. 
So that yeah. is something which I think. You know, we do see even in uh, the U.S., you know, the so-called Mexican restaurants, they have a machine that makes tortillas. Okay, you have to put, the, I think it even needs the dough. So it's just, but you have to put in the dough and then out come the tortillas. They come down and the chips also are made like that. And I certainly want at least naan cooking to become robotic because otherwise you are just getting the heat on your face. Yes. There's no yes. way to So we do need to think about those things. Yes. And, uh, even if it's not robotic, at least it can be remote controlled a little bit so they don't have to be exposed to all that. And so the, One of the things which is very sad right now about the... Uh, chef or the kitchen right now is whenever we are doing whenever we do an audit for a kitchen to understand how can we reduce the energy demand uh, the first guy who comes running to us is the tandoor chef yeah. because he says sir uh, mere aage koila jalta hai 200 200 degrees pe piche ek ek baar itna thanda hua tha hai chhati garam hota hai aur peet thanda hota hai to under poda issue hone lagta hai so that's something which we try to really you know uh, as a we have been trying really hard to somehow segregate the i would say process again tandoor as a whole has uh, moved from uh, coal fire to electrical induction yes but again the flavor is lost so yeah. again uh, the catering to the tongue is very very difficult yeah. so that's something <laughs> okay that's very, very, yeah, I, I, you know, yes, true. But, you know, <clears throat> tastes also change. They don't change for the older people, but the younger people, they... Okay, let's not go into that. We are talking technical things here. Okay. Based on your experience, do you have any tips for young people? Uh, I would say right now, for the youngsters, I would say learn the art of cooking because it is something which is very... Uh, unique skill set which comes to you by hand. Uh, again, the more you rely on external uh, cooking, it may also require a lot of uh, energy. So if you are able to start at home and reduce your energy demand by stopping from eating outside, I think you can start there by decreasing the energy requirement as a starting outside. Second part I would say is uh, again, the requirement of the Individual taste buds of a person is something which which has been very very easily catered to by the apps, you know, Swiggy, Zomato, and they have been made, they have made it very easy for us to feel that I need I want to eat uh, Chinese today, I want to eat tandoori today, I want to eat ice cream, and it's easily available. Yeah. I think we should re reconstruct these uh, requirements that do we really need to cater to every need of our taste buds because Again, at the end of the other uh, end of the table, who is actually taking care of it? Is that the person working at a minimum age job, or is he actually working in a environment which is actually comfortable for him? So yeah. at least let's start at one basic level where we reduce the you know uh, ordering of food online, so at least we can start cooking at home. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's a tough advice to follow, but uh, uh, let's have it. Okay. But what is your uh, own future? How do you see your own future? Uh, sir, I would say one of the things which uh, we we tell the chef, uh, every chef we meet, and we always remind them is that the only reason they are in the uh, business right now is because of the two inch muscle in our mouth, yeah. and uh, that that is what keeps them going. But yeah. again, uh, I would say the future of industry right now is where. We have moved to robotic cooking. I think as robots come into play and we move to more energy equi uh, efficient equipment, I think we will be able to have a reduced amount of, uh, I would say, restaurants in India and they will be replaced with more functioning, I would say, different kind of uh, facilities, which will help, I would say, us grow in different forms. Because uh, one of the things which I I don't really enjoy is every time we, whenever we as uh, Youngsters, we want to say we want to go out. The first primary activity is like, let's go to this restaurant to eat. So it feels like cooking, uh, eating is the only third activity other than being at home and going to work comes to people. I think we should start exploring different uh, I would say activities or hobbies 
as as we grow older but yes the industry will take its time but i hope it moves to a more resilient form of uh, energy efficient equipment okay great anything else you want to add here uh <laughs> I would say my uh, I would say a big thanks to you, sir, because uh, I have been slowly uh, reaching out to individual people on my LinkedIn by educating them about the hindrances in terms of cooking, and I think this is something which a lot of people uh, I am not able to uh, reach out to everyone and every every time at the same time. So if this is helping them in some form to become better at an engineering term, I would say I'm very happy to be. Here. Okay, fine. So thank you, Anmol. Let's end it thank here today. So I do want to talk to you offline a little bit, but let's sure. end it here. I'll be back with another young person or an expert soon. Bye till yeah. then. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much. Bye.